Hi everyone! Today let's learn together some advanced features of DCC EX. In the last video we built a DCC command station with the DCC EX firmware and the Wemos D1 R32 board. The features we will see today can be used on any DCC EX setup. To demonstrate this, you will also see me use this command station, based on the Arduino Mega Wi-Fi board. Visit the official DCC EX website to find a complete list of supported boards, with the pros and cons of each of them. Let's start exploring the features of DCC EX by adding a display to our common station. DCC EX supports both classic character displays and OLED ones, both connected to the I2C bus. If we have a character display, we must therefore verify that it is equipped with the appropriate I2C backpack, like this one. Connect the display to the common station, 5 volts, ground, and the two pins with the I2C signals, data and clock. Every time we want to enable a new feature, we have to reprogram the ZCC EX firmware on the command station. So let's open EX installer, select our board, DCC EX command station and go to the configuration page. Enable I have a display. Then choose the type of display. In my case it is an OLED 128x32. Proceed with the rest of the configuration as in the last video. And load the updated firmware. On the display, we can now read the DCC EX version, the power status of the layout, and the IP address of the common station. Don't forget to save the configuration. It will become useful shortly. Let's now move on to the most interesting feature of DCC EX, the ability to define automations thanks to EXRail. Before looking in details at the various commands that are available, we must learn how to program this automation in the command station. All the automation are written in a single file, called myautomation.h. The first thing we must do is create an empty file with this name in the folder where we saved the configuration using EX installer. If we now run AX installer again and load the existing configuration, we will also see this new file with the option to edit it directly here or, as I recommend, edit the file with the text editor before launching the installer. Every time we want to add elements to the My Automation file, we will have to follow these steps to load the updated version of the file onto the common station. To write our automations, first we need to define the object that we are going to control. The two objects that for sure will be part of our automations are locomotives and turnouts. Locomotives are defined through the roster function whose syntax is as follow. The first parameter is the DCC address of the locomotive decoder. The second one is the name of the locomotive. The third parameter indicates the available function and their names. We must use the slash symbol to separate one function from the next one. Let's use the roster function to define my two locomotives in the my automation file. The first one has address 3 and it is an E656544. The F0 function controls the main lights, while the F1 function controls the headlight. The second locomotive has address 4, 
and it is a D245 sound. In this case, F0 controls the light, F1 the sounds, and F2 the whistle. I put an asterisk before this function. It means that I want this function to be momentary, to have only one whistle every time I press the button. Let's program DCCEX with the updated file. If we now connect to the command station with the engine driver, we can already see the advantages of having defined our locomotives. In fact, by choosing Server Roster, we find them listed in the app and we can control them without having to remember their address. We also find the description of the different functions. Really convenient! If you use JMRI and already have the list of your locomotives, it's good to know that the latest versions have added the roster export to DCC EX command that automatically generates the lines to insert in the myautomation.h file. Let's now define the turnouts, connected to accessory decoders. The function to use is turnout, with the following parameters. ID is the numeric identifier of the turnout. We can put a progressive number. We will use it when we'll create the automations. Other and sub other are the address of the decoder and the port to which the turnout is connected. The last parameter is an optional description. I connected this accessory decoder with address 2 to the command station. Then I connected two different turnout actuators to output A1 and A2. Let's add the definition of these turnouts in the myautomation file. I gave to the turnouts ID 10 and 11 and I configure that they are connected to ports 1 and 2 of a decoder with address 2. As you can see, after having programmed the command station, I can find the turnouts available in the app and I can control them manually. To create complete automations, I will definitely need to receive information from the layout. For example, the fact that a section is busy. The CCEX does not support, at least at the moment, buses such as XPersNet or Locknet. It is therefore necessary to connect the sensor directly to the Arduino board pins, or to use expanders if the pins are not enough. We will also see that DCCEX natively supports some digital sensors. For example, the VL55AL0X distance sensor that I have already used in a previous video. The Engine Driver app does not allow you to see the status of the sensor. In this part of the video, I will therefore use Panel Pro by JMRI. Let's start with a basic example, a button directly connected to a pin over the Arduino board. For example, to pin 22. We use the JMRI sensor macro to define a new sensor connected to that pin. By pressing the button, I can change the state of the sensor. Of course, instead of a button, I can connect any sensor with a digital output. For example, an infrared sensor or a current sensing one. Let's now see the use of the VL53L0X sensor. It is an I2C sensor. In addition to connecting power and ground, we must therefore connect the data and clock pins. 
If you have already connected a display as shown in, at the beginning of the video, you will have to use the same Arduino pins also for the sensor. To connect the display and sensor to Arduino at the same time, I use this breadboard. But for a more stable setup, it is better to solder the wires. Finally, the GPIO1 pin of the sensor must be connected to 5 volts. In the My Automation file, first we have to include the sensor driver. Then, with the HAL macro, we can configure it. 4000 is the virtual pin to which we connect the sensor. 29 is the standard address, while 100 and 150 are respectively the distances in millimeter for which the sensor is active or inactive. Finally, via the JMRI sensor macro, we define the virtual pin 4000 as a sensor, so that it is visible in Panel Pro. As you can see, if I move the locomotive closer or farther away from the sensor, its state changes correctly. In conclusion, in this video we saw how it is possible to expand DCCIX by connecting new devices and how to define the object that will be the building blocks of our new automations. But we'll learn this in the next video. Thanks for watching and have fun!